The last few weeks I've been messing around with this homemade uber cheap 360 degree camera rig. Now it's a cool concept, but as many of you all pointed out, it needs some improvements before it can legitimately be useful. The first awkwardly glaring issue is quality. Now obviously whenever your video is a reflection of a half inch diameter sphere, the quality isn't going to be stellar, but there are a few improvements that we can make. And like I stated in my last video, a commenter pointed out that you actually can change the focus of a Raspberry Pi camera. It requires a strong pair of tweezers to slightly twist the small lens. And getting things in focus just right can make a world of difference as far as quality. You're also welcome to use a better quality USB web camera for this project instead of the Raspberry Pi one but just make sure that it's compatible with the Raspberry Pi. Now aside from tweaking the hardware, we can also tweak our software to improve quality. While the software that I introduced in the last video does do a good basic job of de-warping the video, we can round and average out some of the values so that it makes the video a bit more clear. And you can view and download the changes that I made to the code from my GitHub page at this link. This combined with the webcam tweaks should make the video quality much better, or at least slightly more recognizable. You be the judge. The next improvement you all suggested was some type of remote control so that you can easily start and stop the camera. I juggled around with several potential ideas that you all suggested, such as a physical button or an infrared remote control, but the one that I settled on was turning the whole camera into a standalone Wi-Fi hotspot so that you can connect directly to it with any device to control it. Now this sounds like a great solution, but let's see if we can actually do it. So I boiled it all down to four steps that we need to take. Number one, making a web server that's going to host our web controls. Number two, adjusting the Wi-Fi card so that it can allow for other devices to connect to it. Number three, installing hotspot software, which is what's going to turn our Pi into a functioning hotspot. And lastly, installing DNS software so that we can assign the connected devices IP addresses. Okay, first off, the web server. I'm going to be installing a web server software called Light TPD. I'm also going to be installing PHP so that I can run PHP web pages. And then I'm just going to enable PHP use on the Light TPD web server. We'll also need to adjust the web folder permissions so that it can be seen online. Opening up a browser and typing in your local IP address. We should see that our web page is working, but it's not at all what we want it to look like. To change that, the web pages are stored in the var www HTML folder on your Pi, and you can change it however you want. But if you're not up for that, luckily I've already built a set of web controls that you can download from here. Basically, you just download it and extract it to your HTML folder. Web server, check. Now let's take a look at the Wi-Fi card setup. So it is not to pwn the Wi-Fi that's already on my Pi altogether. I added a second Wi-Fi adapter. So now I have one for internet and one to use as the hotspot. And for the one we're wanting to use as the hotspot, we need to go into the DHCP CD configuration file and tell the Raspberry Pi operating system to ignore it. Next, we're going to need to open up our network interface configuration file and find our wireless card that we're using as the hotspot and change it from manual to static and then provide it with these network values. And you can copy what I have here or if you know more about networking, you can create your own. Now just restart the DHCP and then toggle the wireless card off and then back on. Alright, Wi-Fi card, check. Now on to the hotspot software. I'm going to be installing host ADP for that. And then when it's through installing, we need to create a new configuration file for it. You want your configuration file to look very similar to this, where you have the wireless card you're using, the driver, a broadcast name for your network signal, and then a password for your network. 
Now you can save it and let's open up the default host ADP configuration file and point it to the one that we just made. All right, hotspot software, check. The last step in our list is to provide a way for our hotspot to assign IP addresses to devices that connect to it. Since this is just gonna be a simple, small setup, I'm gonna be installing DNS mask. Once that's done, let's back up the original configuration file for it and create a new one. And again, you want yours to look like this with the wireless card we're using, a static IP address, the one that we created earlier, and an IP address range that can be assigned to connecting devices. Finally, all we have to do is start host APD and DNS mask, and you should now see your camera in the list of Wi-Fi hotspots. So everything's now set up and ready to go. I got my camera up and running, as you can see behind me. It's connected to an emergency cell phone battery charger. And on my phone, I can see a list of Wi-Fi hotspots, and there is my camera. So I just connect to it, open up a browser, and go to the Pi's IP address, which I showed you in an earlier step. Now I can hit the Start Preview button, and it will take a few seconds, but it will open up a preview of the camera. And then I can stop it before I hit Record, and then just hit the Record button. When it's done, you can take it back home to record it and convert it. To make this process easier, in the zip file for the web folder, I also included a bash script that you can set as an executable and run it. It should de-warp your video, convert it, and put it on your desktop. Now you can take this video and upload it to YouTube as I outlined in my previous tutorial. All right, you can find out more about this project at this link, and if you have any improvements or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. What idea would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com ideas. Click here to watch more videos like this, and if you got any value out of this video and would like to give some value back, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, or donate at tinkernut.com donate. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.